Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we're studying Joshua 13. Let's get started. All right, Joshua 13 is, uh, is, is, is going back over the lands that God's people had been given. Now I want you to imagine the nation of Israel is kind of like a large rectangle. Inside the middle of the, the country, there's a river that runs all the way down kind of by the middle. In the middle of that, there's a lake. And then down south from that, there's another lake. So the river is called, uh, do you know this one? This is where, where was Jesus baptized? Uh, in the Jordan River. In the Jordan River, all right? So then there's a lake that's up top. That lake up top is where Jesus spent most of his ministry. Here in this chapter, it's going to call it the Sea of Chinnereth, but we would call it the Sea of Galilee. And then all of that flows down to the lowest point of the whole country. Matter of fact, the lowest point on earth is called the Dead Sea. All right? So everything described here is about the land on the east side of the Jordan River. Now, I want you to notice whenever you're reading that you're going to constantly read the word inheritance. Now, I talked to you a little bit about this on Sunday. The Israelites were going in and they were fighting battles and they were winning army after army battles. But every time it talks about them getting the land, it says that their inheritance was this, which means the promised land is not a land that they won. It's not a land that they earned. It was a land that they inherited from their Father in heaven, okay? So from chapters 13 to 21, it's going to use the word inheritance 55 times. That's where this comes from. They received it from their father. Now, it says in verse 14, only the tribe of Levi had been given no inheritance. So of all the tribes of Israel, they had been given little portions of land to kind of have and set up their homes. The only people that did not have a land given to them were the Levites. The Levites were the special chosen tribe of people that were chosen to be the workers in the temple, the workers in the tabernacle, and the priests, which means their home would not be a land. Their home would be a person. Their home was God. And so where all the other, all the other tribes were getting places to live, their place to be was in the service of God. And that's a really pretty picture. John, what did you pick up from this chapter? So in verse one, it says, Now Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, uh, You are old and advanced in years. So <laughs> um, it's good to get old, but it's even better to stay listening to God and following him. That's true. That's true. So... So, you know, John is right. Getting old is, is great. All you got to do to get old is keep on living. Did you? I thought it was funny that it says Joshua was old and advanced in years. And then it says, and God told him, Joshua, you old and advanced in years. But then the next thing it says, it says, it says, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. So even after Joshua had gotten old, Joshua never hit cruise control and he never retired. Joshua was still hearing from God the same way he was hearing from God whenever he first took over as a leader of his people. So just because he got old doesn't mean he ever kind of retired and coasted on life. I think that's a good lesson to learn. The other thing that I liked about this is that whenever you read through this passage, I went through and I circled every time that, uh, that it said the word family. And so it's talking about the family of this and the family of that and the family of these people and the family of those people. And what I just wrote in the margin of my Bible here was it, how, how really interesting and special it is for God to have his eye on families. See, we would talk about the Israelites like the tribes of Israel, but God talks about them as, as family. And what he's saying really is that these people are his family. And so as God is looking at land to give his, his people, I want you to notice he is giving homes to families. He is making sure his family has a home. And I want to tell you my, how this connects to my favorite thing Jesus said in John chapter 14. He said, 
let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in me, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. And he said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He says, now I go to, I go to ahead to prepare a place for you. And if I go ahead to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will receive you to myself that where I am there, you may be also. So he's talking about a father who is preparing a place for his children and not just a place for his children, a place inside his family as his children. There's a lot of good gospel notes here and it all has to do with the family. Look at verse 33. It says, but to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance as he had said to them. So remember that bill about the Levites? He's reiterating that. He's coming back to that and he goes, some of you think home is where you lay down at night. He said, but what you're really supposed to be catching is home is not where you sleep. Home is who you walk with. He said, and I want my people to walk with who? With me. So for you, I want you to look around at the world today and it may be great or it may be crummy for you today. I want you to understand you're not home yet, but when you are with God, you get a glimpse. When you sit with him in his word, you get a glimpse of what home is supposed to be. Keep reading, and we're gonna and we're gonna talk about what it is to be home. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.